We've created some users in Active Directory in Windows Server 2016. Let's go ahead and open them up and choose to edit them. We go to Tools, Active Directory, Users, and Computers. So we've created some users. There's a couple different here. We have uh, Robert McMillan, Admin, Full Administrator. We also created a test. Let's go ahead and double click on the Admin account. So in here, we see we have options such as we can change the description, the display name, things like that. We also have telephone numbers. We can change the address here. If we go into the account, we can change the uh, logon name for the user so they can use a different logon name. And we also see a pre-Windows 2000 option in case you have older uh, Active Directory. You can go in and change the logon hours to decide when they can and cannot log in. There we go. So now we can say they can log in where it says purple. They can't log in when it's white. And we also have the option to change uh, the account, such as uh, password never expiring or user must change password, etc. You also see some additional options that you didn't see when we created the users. And these are all listed here. A lot of these are just for adding additional security into the user account itself. If you think the user is going to be leaving the company or the organization, you can cause it to automatically expire at a certain date. We can go to profile and set up a user profile path and also force the user to use a logon script. The logon script is pulled from the net logon folder off of any domain controller. We can also set up a home folder to map to, the, say, their user directory. And we can also map to a specific drive letter itself. We can go in and change telephone numbers for informational purposes. Unless you're going to be using what's called dynamic access control, dynamic access control allows us to um, set permissions to folders and files based on more than just their username and their password. It allows us to set up uh, access based on any one of these tabs, such as their zip code, such as they, uh, in the organization, their job title, their department, things like that. So it actually makes these different tabs useful, something that you can use. You can go in and change what groups they're members of here. The dial-in permissions, although it sounds a little bit like it's uh, outdated, are used for VPN. So if you have the allow access or you give them access through a network policy, then they can VPN into the server. We also have the environment, such as starting the program, uh, starting a program when the user logs on, and we can connect client drives, etc. at the same time. And then we can also end certain sessions after a certain amount of time. If we hit the drop down list, we can say after an hour, for instance, if the user hasn't made any keyboard or mouse movement, then we can go ahead and disconnect their session. We can also uh, set the active session limit, which would log them out. And we can choose end session or disconnect. We can also allow for reconnection as well from any client. If they're using remote desktop services, we can click on the remote desktop services profile, give them a certain profile path where they can pull up their desktop and their internet favorites, etc., from a shared uh, folder path that allows us to back up that data each night. Otherwise, uh, it's possible that you might lose that data. We can also set up remote control to allow remote control into the user's computer with or without their permission so we can assist them or monitor what's going on. If we go to the account properties one more time, it allows us to also set log on to, which basically means we can have them log on to only specific computers. So if we do that, then we can say uh, you can't log on to all computers, you can only log on specific computers. And that can help in a kiosk situation or a situation where you have secure computers you don't want people logging into. So when you're all done, you can just apply that and all those changes will then be made. If you've made any mistakes during it, such as a specified path not being valid, you'll be prompted to go back in and fix that before it will allow you to apply it. So that's how we make changes to the properties of a user in Windows Server 2016 Active Directory.